Welcome back, Desmond. You'll be happy to hear there's actually good news for once. Yeah? I've managed to locate a power source, and it's relatively close by. Up for a trip to Manhattan? Is it safe to leave? Abstergo's gotta be looking for us. Obviously it's not safe. Can't exactly sit around here hoping to get lucky, though, can we? We need that power source. Besides, I'm sure you can cook up some way to hide our movements. Maybe. The Templars have access to all kinds of satellites and camera systems. We'll need to find a way to mask our digital signature. I can probably camouflage the van, too. But there's not much I can do for us. That's an easy one. Local utility companies have assured the public that they're completely prepared for the upcoming solar maximum. Disruptions to service are expected to be minimal. If only they knew. What's this? A remote-operated camera. It'll provide us with a feed while you're on mission. This will let us talk to each other. We're almost there, so listen up. The artifact is in an office penthouse in Lower Manhattan. At this time of night, direct infiltration is gonna get you noticed. I think we're better off having you drop in from above. What do you mean, above? Testing, one, two, three. Yep, reach you just fine. Now why don't you power up the camera? I've got patients, running diagnostics. Perfect, I've got a nice strong signal. Just a heads up, there's no elevator access from here on out. You'll have to get up there the old fashioned way. Seriously, Sean? Fuck you. Jesus. Look on the bright side. No security to worry about. And on the not so bright side, the slightest misstep means you're effectively uh, paced. Shut up, Sean.
Almost there, Desmond. Once you reach the top of the lit up crane, you should be high enough to make the jump. Should? It'll be fine, don't worry. Well, you might want to worry a little. I'm pretty sure she was high when she was running the numbers. Sean! A joke. It was a joke. Or was it? Wasn't so bad. So, you must be Desmond. Not exactly what I expected, but I guess your kind doesn't have many options these days. Who are you? Ask your father. Now give me that. I don't think so. Look, I'm not supposed to kill you, but the boss man didn't say anything about fucking you up. So you got to the cap. So who the hell is Daniel Cross? Believe it or not, he used to be an assassin. The assassin, the way I've heard it told, but... It turned out he was a sleeper agent for Abstergo, programmed to infiltrate and destroy the organization. How did he know you were there? We could be compromised. They must have caught me snooping inside their network and sent Cross to see what we were after. If they were aware of our current location, we'd know. Though, I will say this. It doesn't bode very well for future expeditions. I've set up some cameras topside. If anyone shows up, we'll see it. I'd suggest you go see about finding a socket for that power source. Or we can return to Connor if you prefer. All the artifacts in the world won't mean a thing without the key. I know everyone thinks I'm being silly, but I can't shake the feeling we're being watched. We are being watched. By Juno. Or some version of her. Do you think it's a recording? Or is she a ghost? Or something else? Is she talking to us the way Minerva talked to Ezio? No clue. I mean, who knows what else they were working on down here? There's still so many rooms we don't have access to. But do you think she's like literally down here, waiting somewhere, still alive? Still alive? That's mental. That I mean she'd be at least 75, 80,000 years old? No, powerful, yeah, but not that powerful. They came down here looking for a way to survive. Maybe they found one. Was 
Is it weird seeing Cross? What do you mean? It's different for you. You don't know about what happened, I guess. For a long time, he was... important to us. He was a different person. Sean said he was a sleeper agent. Like Lucy. It was different. She made a choice, but Cross... If you read the files... Abstergo just... They... They did terrible things to him. Rebecca? You're lucky. We all are. We have people who care about us, who look out for us. He was all alone, and the people he thought he could trust, they used him. Did you know him? No, but... I knew Hannah. Who's that? She tried to help him. She trusted him. But there was a raid about a year ago. She stayed behind so the others could escape. Tried to reason with him, to see if she could fix things. Well, what happened? What do you think happened? He killed her. That's what he does. That's all he knows how to do. Sometimes it seems like that's all any of us know how to do. Rebecca. I just want to be alone right now. Son? I, uh... I owe you an apology. I... I shouldn't have lashed out like that. You have to understand, I've never been very good at this. Never mind that we live rather... extraordinary lives. Yeah, I kinda liked my ordinary one. You can't escape who you are, Desmond. So I've noticed. Look, it's silly for us to go back and forth like this. I admit, I did a shitty job raising you. I apologize, I'm sorry. But it's important you understand it didn't come from a bad place. You're my son. I love you. I guess I was so busy trying to make sure nothing bad happened, I didn't consider the consequences. Truce. I can't believe it's taken me so long to ask, but... How's Mom? She's not... No, 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 no. Your mother is fine. We decided it was safer if we split up for this job. Always assuming the worst. <laughs> for good reason. Can I at least say hi to her? I'm sorry, it's too risky. Maybe when we're done. Right. When we're done. Have... have we ever tried to make peace with the Templars? Throughout our history, there have been moments. Several, in fact. But... it's impossible. There are existential differences, insurmountable. If there were to be unity, it wouldn't be a truce so much as a submission. But knowing what's about to happen, wouldn't it make sense to try and talk to Vidic? Come to an arrangement, even if it's only temporary? We'd all be so busy watching our backs, nothing would get accomplished. <laughs> Imagine that. We're more productive at war. Well, have we ever tried sending in someone? Doing to them what they did to us with Lucy? Or Cross? We have, and it's never worked. We've sent people who were either too weak and found themselves turned, or too strong and were unable to carry out the charade. I just feel like we all want the same thing. We use the same words, but that's all they are, words. In the end, it all comes down to freedom. We seek it, they detest it. And so there's never an end to the fight. Not until one side is completely gone. Is that even possible? Probably not. Our two groups have existed in one form or another since... well, since forever. But things can be better than they are. And that's something. Did you look for me, Dad? When I was gone? Every day. Come on. I mean it. Every night I'd look, searching for your name or variations of it, hoping you'd slip up. Abstergo only found you first because they had better access. 
A few more days and it would have been me. Well, I'm here now. And I'm glad. Do you think Lucy regretted what she was doing? I used to think I knew her well, but clearly that wasn't the case. So I really can't give you an honest answer. She seemed so sincere, though. Like she really wanted to make a difference. Yes, well, when I first met him, I thought the same thing about Cross. It just keeps happening over and over again. What does? Everything. Don't get weird on me, Desmond. No, it, it's fine. I'm fine. Don't worry. All right, then. You should think about getting back in the Animus. We've got to find that key. We should probably get back to Connor. Come on, son. We got work to do. Ah, Desmond. There you are. Can I ask a favor? Maybe. When this is all over, I'd like to try turning the dial back on the Animus. Like, all the way back. To the time of the first civilization. You think it would work? There was no real loss of fidelity when you visited Altair. Then again, that was about a thousand years ago, and I'm looking at going back at least 70,000 more. Sure, I'd be up for it. Be interesting to see what things were like back then. Excellent. I think it would prove most enlightening. So this is how it started. What are you up to? Just brushing up on my American history. Well, I say history. They certainly teach you strange things in the States. Like what? Well, for all the talk of this being a revolutionary war, it was a civil one. Well, not that kind of civil. I mean, there was no America versus Britain. It was Brit on Brit action. And you can clearly see how the whole thing got started. One war gave birth to the other. You mean the Seven Years' War? Exactly. Seems the Crown overspent in its attempt to keep the French out. Wound up with a great deal of debt. Believing that the colonists should help to shoulder the burden, new taxes were created. It was a reasonable request, even if Parliament was rather, well, undiplomatic about it. Well, it's not really fair to tax people for a war they didn't want any part of. What? Didn't want any part of? Did you not notice George Washington with Edward Braddock? He was right there in the middle of it. So here you have the Crown spending who knows how much money to secure a place for the colonists to thrive, and then, when they ask for a little bit of help... Right, look, think of it this way. King George and the colonists, they all go out to dinner, right? And when the bill comes, George asks for them to kick in and pay their share. Fair enough. But keep in mind, he's been taking them out to dinner gratis for decades now. But the colonists, oh no, they insist they only had a glass of water and a side salad. Never mind the table's full of half-eaten food and empty bottles of wine. And when the king points this out, what do the colonists do? Oh, they flip the table over and they storm out the restaurant. Probably intending to return later and burn it down. You left out the part where the king pointed a gun at the colonists and asked them to cover dinner for everyone in the restaurant. Right, right, yeah, interesting take. If he pulled out a gun, and I'm not sure he did, it would only have been after the hundredth failed attempt at getting them to pay their fair share. But how do you define someone's fair share? Oh, well, with a war, apparently. I wonder how many other places like this exist. There are dozens of them, all over the world. And somehow no one's ever found one before us. I don't think that's true. Oh? When I was at Abstergo, Vidic talked about silencing discoveries made by non-Templars. And I'm sure Abstergo has dug up plenty. The things they must know. Regretting throwing in with us? <laughs> no. Just looking forward to when we can finally trounce those bastards so I can dive into their archives. Oh, I think I found a lead on another power source. Later, Desmond. I'm in the middle of something very important right now. Just, that's a rule. Just follow that as a rule.
Wonder what's inside. Only one way to find out. only awaiting discovery? Or might it be changed? Here we learned the answer, and thought that it might save us. They were used to command, to control, to own. But we soon discovered another use. When enough sat in thrall and were told to believe, their thoughts took on form. What was imagined became real. If a hundred minds could wish away a wall or create a tree, what might a thousand do? Ten thousand? More? Might we change the consensus and will the threat away? We resolved to send one into the sky where it might illuminate us all. Once placed, a sentence would be uttered. Make us safe. In this way, we would change the consensus. We would save the world. But it never came to be. We sent a dozen of them skyward. But there was no way to maintain control. To direct the beam. To enthrall the world. To speak the words. Though this was strange and dangerous, what we tried next was worse. Travel back to change the past, but we could not find a way. But forward, we could look forward, and so here we sought to see beyond ourselves and know what was to come. First, we watched to learn if our work would succeed, but the answer was always the same, so we moved on to other things. But she remained, the one you call Minerva. In time, she too stopped looking, and instead began to speak. She called out across time, in the hopes that you might be saved. She hid messages where none might find them, save for you and those within this place. Fascinating. Tired of it. The cryptic warnings, the threats. Just tell us what you want! But they are. We saw the Nephilim there. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Imagine trying to explain all this to a two-year-old, to a grasshopper. When they said the will of the gods was unknowable, they meant it. Literally. I killed her, you know. I killed Lucy. It was the Apple, son. It was Juno. I saw what she was. What would happen if I let her live? I could have stopped myself. I mean, there was a force there. But I didn't have to. I chose to. Desmond. Lucy was going to betray us and take the Apple back to Abstergo. I saw the satellite launched. I saw them turn it on and then... Failed. Whatever's on the other side of that door, it benefits Juno. 
We need to be careful. Good luck, Desmond. <laughs> 